Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben and this is part two in our series, The Accents of Star Wars. Now, first of all, I wanna clear a couple of things up. Last time I said that all the clone troopers spoke with Australian accents. This isn't strictly the case. It's more just the feeling I got from watching them in the Clone Wars TV series. But the original actor who played Jango Fett in the movies, Tamura Morrison, is from Rotorua, New Zealand. Do you like your army? I look forward to seeing them in action. They'll do their job well. And all the clones are clones of Django, so should have the same accent. However, in the TV series, the clones were played by D. Bradley Baker, an American actor born in Indiana and residing in LA. He does a good job of mimicking Tamura's accent, but he is an American after all, and I often feel that his clone troopers sound more Australian than they do New Zealand. Now I'm Waxer, he's Boyle. Now for the Lerman, who I said were Scottish, but they're actually more of a combination of Scottish and Irish. The chief, who I show footage of, speaks with an Irish accent. We came here to find peace. You must leave. You will only destroy what small amount of peace is left in the galaxy. To be more specific, Northern Irish, kind of like the Reverend Ian Paisley. We are starting upon the road. I emphasize starting, which I believe will take us to lasting peace in our province. But the chief might want to check if he really is the father, because his son, for some reason, speaks with a Scottish accent. Many others agree with me, but we were raised under a very strict code. We must respect it, even if we don't agree. Oh well, there have been stranger father and son combinations, I guess. I think it's time I told you something I should have told you a long time ago. Okay. You might have been kind of... A uh, adopted. I knew it. You knew? Well, who told you? No one. I mean, come on, Dad. Now let's talk about some new ones. Jedi Kit Fisto talks with a somewhat Caribbean sounding accent. That's Ahsoka ship. It just came out of hyperspace. Send out the tugs to help guide them in. And his dreadlocks do fit well with that vibe. But his accent isn't as strong as Jamaicans like Bob Marley. The character was played by American actor Phil Lamar, who based the accent off Jeffrey Holder, the 7-Up guy from this classic commercial. Whatever it is that makes 7-Up so refreshingly different, the other soft drinks never had it. Ha ha ha. Never will. Mm. Holder was from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. The Nemoidians from the Trade Federation speak with a vaguely Japanese sounding accent. I found this pointed out in an article titled The Five Most Racist Characters in Star Wars. And the accent does sound pretty Japanese. Here it is, followed by an actual Japanese accent. My lord, is that legal? I will make it legal. And the Jedi? A samurai cannot stand the shame of defeat. I was honored to cut off his head. That second clip was from The Last Samurai, another racist movie in which everyone except for the white guy dies. I mean, it's a good movie, I'm just pointing that out. I don't want to spoil it for you. Anyway, the Nemoidians do have vaguely Japanese sounding names like Deku and Koru and Newt Gunray, who is perhaps American. Also in the article about the most racist characters, I found Wato, the slave owner who held young Anakin and his mother on Tatooine. It's been pointed out that he speaks with an Israeli sounding accent, although a very gruff version of it. No pod is worth two slaves, not by a longer shot. Compare that with an actual Israeli accent. You live in the greatest city in the world. You have the greatest minds, greatest ideas, greatest facilities. Still, none of you could come up with an app that changed the Israeli accent. And it does sound kind of similar. I actually found a video tutorial on YouTube teaching you how to do Wato's accent. So what you want to do, you want to start off with a deep voice and just go, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Then you want to add some sort of ripple in it, using your vocals to try and make a uh, and when you add that all together, you finally get it. Uh, 
and he is very good with the pods. In The Phantom Menace, you don't really read too much into the fact that Watto has this accent. I actually thought it was just sort of a Middle Eastern accent in general, possibly even an Arabic sounding accent. But in the next movie, when Anakin goes back to Tatooine to search for his mother, that's when it kind of gets a bit weird. Watto now has a beard and this hat, which makes him look very similar to a Hasidic Jew. The beard seems to accentuate his nose shape, and he ends up looking very similar to these cartoons of greedy Jewish merchants that have been used offensively on many occasions over the last century. When you combine that with the accent, it's even more obvious that this slave owner is supposed to be Jewish. Now at this point, I'm asking George Lucas, what were you thinking, man? I mean, who approved the decision for this character? I understand, you know, it's hard to create a new accent, so you have to work off of something that already exists. With the Nemoidians, the Japanese connection is vague enough that you don't really notice it. And with Watto in The Phantom Menace, you didn't really notice that either. But in Attack of the Clones, they seem to be going out of their way to make him appear Jewish. And since he's a negative character, he's a slave owner, that's just kind of racist. Anyway guys, what do you think about all of this? Leave your comments below. If you want to check out that video about how to do Watto's accent, I'll put a link on screen in just a moment and in the description. If you're new, please subscribe, give this video a like, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.